We will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, help us to realize, help us to become a man of honor, help us to realize and become righteous, help us to become righteous so our desires are granted. Help us to be righteous so that we are happy. Help us to be righteous so that everything we pray for is granted. May we be righteous so that our children are blessed. Through the word, may we realize, act completely and be righteous. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's say together, sheep. So you want your desires to be fulfilled, don't you? So whose desires are fulfilled? Pro Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. Let's find it. It's the righteous whose desires are fulfilled. If you become righteous, then your desires are fulfilled. But if you have done forced step repentance, if you're righteous, why is it that your desires aren't fulfilled? Why is that? So if you do four-step repentance and you become righteous, then he says that he will do according to your desires. And, but, and yet that doesn't work. Your children don't do well. Because when you're on the side of demons, your desires, their greed, their lust, so how can that do well? Don't be mistaken. So if you have a heart of a thief and you want to do something, so because you have the heart of a thief, that's why it doesn't work. If you become righteous, you change. Even though it's the same thing, what you want to do changes. So that's how blessings come. So what is your desire? If you have demons inside, when you haven't repented, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, so you have demons. In that heart of a demon, if you want a thousand dollars, so after you do four-step repentance, you become righteous. Why would you need a thousand dollars like a thief? That's why you don't do well. After you do false debt repentance, you don't receive. If you do false debt repentance, before that greed, that desire, if you do false debt repentance, it has to change. So you do false debt repentance, you go toward God, and then you go toward your greed. So, if this light didn't turn off, turn on when you do four step repentance as soon as that light turns on you go back to your old thoughts that's why it doesn't work this is why you're always not doing well and yet you don't know so so more important than having your desires fulfilled is to receive wisdom proverbs chapter 3 verse 15 we talked about this before so even though i do this you still don't understand so demons those without four step repentance no matter how much they pray it doesn't work Oh, but they do do well. Well, that's those going to hell. God still feeds them. Matthew 5, verse 44 to 45. They're not answers. They're not blessings. You know, just be, uh, just to a prisoner on death row, giving them food, that's not blessings. You're just feeding them until they die. So stop being mistaken. Even though you are preach these sermons, you still don't understand. And so then when it's pointed out, you're like, oh... So that's not faith. It's always your thoughts, your knowledge. So what have we found? Let's read together. Jehovah is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Amen. So what does he do to the prayer of the righteous? Well, their desires are fulfilled. Here it says he hears their prayer. So to those who are righteous, he hears their prayers. This Amen. So let's find Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15. So even though you read the Bible, with that one word, you can go somewhere completely else, but you don't even know this. And that's why you're completely wrong. This is why it doesn't, why you don't do well. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15. So Proverbs So Proverbs chapter 10 verse 24 it says to the righteous their desires are fulfilled so what are your desires 
Are they the desires of the righteous or the desires of the evil? You say, give me money. May I be healed of my health. May my sickness be healed. May my children do well. My husband do well. May I do well. You pray, but are you evil or are you righteous? What you're thinking, what you're seeking, if you're outside of Christ, then you're evil. Do you expect God to hear the evil? So if you do four-step repentance, so you change from being evil to being righteous. So does that mean your thoughts are the same or are they different? So if you're still requesting the same things that you did when you were evil, how have you changed? So that means even though you became righteous, you've gone back after doing four-step repentance, you've gone back to being evil. So are you righteous or evil? Well, you've gone back to being evil. So you wash cleanly at the at the bathhouse and you go back into the soot. You know, after you have a bath and then you, you become black with soot and then you say, oh, um, even though I pray, I'm not given. Those things that you saw, those thoughts, when you're outside of Christ, when you were evil, once you become righteous, those thoughts change. For example, let's say you need a kitchen knife. Well, if you're evil, you want to use that for robbery. But if you come this way, it's going to change so that you want to cook. So it's the same knife, but you have to change. So your thoughts have to change for it to be given, but you don't change those thoughts. After you do four-step repentance, you're like, oh, I've realized. Oh, yes, my parents' sins are my sins. And you do this and you do all that. But after that, even though you ask for forgiveness of yourself and uh, if you ask forgiveness of God and yourself and then, and then you give thanks, and then, but then your heart doesn't change and you're like, give me the knife so I can become a robber. So yes, if you receive the knife, before you needed to be a robber, but after realize and after repenting, you realize it shouldn't be for robbery, but for my family to, to cook. So your heart has to change for you to be given. But you're still saying, oh yeah, I still want a thousand dollars so I can go gambling. So we might as well not do four-step repentance. This is why he doesn't give to you. So let's find Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15. So he says, you need to obtain wisdom. Because receiving wisdom is better than all your desires. So now you realize why you're not doing well. If you do forced your repentance, a person has to change because you're in Christ. So who? God. God changes you. But the way you come to church, it's the same. You come just to make it on time. You still have those same thoughts. And when you come and sit here, when you do four-step repentance, your heart hasn't changed. It's still the same. So when have you been in Christ? When have you changed to become new? You have to change for God to give to you. So God says, if you're in Christ, if you do four-step repentance, if you do the mystery of Christ, then he makes you new. So if he's made you new, then your thoughts have to be different. But they're the same. Have you done four-step repentance? Oh, yes, I've done it for many months. So why are you the same? Why do you still have that same black soot on your face? You, you're asked, have you had a bath? And you say you have, but then you've rolled back in the soot again. So what was the point of bathing? You know, if you've bathed, you shouldn't have that soot back on. Your heart, your thoughts, your actions have to change. It's not me that does it. God does it. So what is it that I witness to you? You know, I even forget my phone number at home. Why? Because you become a new person. But you don't do this. Your actions are the same. Your thoughts are the same. So you're sitting there with the same evil thoughts of a thief, saying, give me a knife. Well, God knows that if you're given a knife, you'll become a thief, a robber. So after doing four-step repentance, you come this way. You come toward... So you got to come, You should come to God and say, oh, this knife shouldn't be for robbery. But then, but then you go back to here. So how can you receive answers? You have to go to the place of righteousness. But you go to the place of evil. 
So this is what we continuously do. Why does this happen? Because you need to seek after wisdom. My desires, when you were evil, my desires, are they, are they greed or is it from a good heart? It's all greed. So if you have disease, so you've already been hit, that's because you have greed. So because of this greed, this evil, you sin. When this sin, this sin leads to death. James chapter 1 verse 15. So if you ask for your disease to be healed, when you're asking for that, you're still evil. But after doing four step repentance, if you become righteous, you have a heart where you don't need any of that. That naturally comes. So, even though you're in the same place, your thoughts are all different. Even though you're in the same place, you know, people are going to the same place. But those people who do forced repentance, their heart is, this is my house. So, if I witness to you, I say, this is my house. You know, when I went to the bathhouse, the owner had come to bathe. So I was bathing with the owner. And the owner, so according to the Bible, I was saying, this house is mine. So I say to the owner, so many times when I meet, when I meet him at the bathhouse, I always say, that house is mine. Do you know how much of a liar I am, how wicked I am? I say that with my mouth to the owner. And I say that I am the owner. I say that. But he, he goes to, he goes to, um, he goes to exercise, to weight lift. I, I change into a new, a new gown, but he goes naked. You know, I thought, oh, he, he shouldn't go like that. People are all going to see him. But then all the gowns that have been discarded, he goes and uses one of those used ones. I say with my mouth that I'm an owner, but he truly is an owner because I'm a fake. I'm evil because I took out a new gown. And that's when I realized, Lord, I've only said with my mouth that I'm an owner, but in reality, I'm a fake. That person, he's, he's given me a shot. God used him to hit me. So who, who is the owner? The one that wore that those used gowns to go exercise? Or is it the one who goes wear a new gown to go? The one that wore the new gown, the pastor park is the fake who said it, I'm an owner just with my words. But the true owner used the, used the already used gown. So already the actions are different. And so, pastor park, my repentance was fake. If you can't even realize that, and then you say, why am I not being given blessings? You're a complete fake in front of God. What would he give to you? You've only pretended to do four-step repentance. You said with your words only, with your mouth only, that you're an owner, but actually you're not. So even when I go to a cheap restaurant to the owner, I say, look, it's late. You know, let's just just bring your rice and come and eat with us. And he, he said, I've already eaten. I said, when? When have you eaten? And he said, when I eat the leftovers of the customers, I'm already full. That's the owner. But the fakes, the employees, always take out the new food. They're different. So this is what's different between getting blessings or not. So you need to realize, if you've done four-step repentance, and yet you can't act as a true, but you act as a false. You have to act truly to, for God to give you blessings. But this is where it doesn't work. But if you don't even do forced re repentance, you can't even realize that. You're like, but I paid money to eat my own food. What's wrong with that? So the owner, if you see those who earn money, who run their business well, you think, you know, you know, if you're if you're diligent, you at least get to feed yourself. Proverbs chapter twelve, verse twenty-seven. So in in Asia, we say, you know, if you're diligent, you at least get small blessings. But these Christians who are fake, they're not even diligent. They don't even have Christian faith, so they live as beggars. So they're lazy, and they don't think of their neighbor in any way. All they think about is feeding their own selves. So they have all filthiness. So they're neither this nor that. But in the world, those people who can at least feed themselves, they're diligent. 
So in the Bible it says, if you're diligent, you at least get to feed yourself. But not just that, someone who is diligent, you know, amongst themselves, even though it's crooked, they still try to find the right the right way. But those people who believe in Jesus, because they find the right way in God's word, because they become righteous, all the desires of the righteous are fulfilled. So if we do forced at repentance, 100% you become righteous. Why doesn't it work? Because you're still doing those actions that make it not work. But you're so crooked, you don't even know that. So the owner... So... Uh, restaurant in a good location anyone can do that but the restaurant where you have to try and find it you know in the in the deepest of valleys so at four dollars you know they have a menu where you're given you know beef you know that's four dollars in with a menu that includes a dish of beef So even though this shop is, you have to go down all these alleys, but it's been running for 27 years. And they've done so well. He, the person said they've even bought some land in their hometown. But how is that? So he says, I eat what's left over from the customers. That person? They give good things to their customers. But someone who eats good things for themselves? They give dog food to their customers. So if I eat what's good for me, you need to know you're going the way where you'll be ruined. Why is it that I always tell you how I always seek out cheap food? Do you know why? If my heart, if I seek what's good for me, I could do that. But then I'll be ruined and I'll ruin you all. But I'm not saying don't do that. So, yes, you need to be able to do that, but your your normal life shouldn't be like that. So I said to the owner, well, if you eat what's left over from the customers, you have to eat good food for for you to be healthy. But he said when I when he gets good food, he thinks of his customers. He doesn't think of himself. So someone who wants to give good things to others, They don't seek what's good for themselves. Some people, those people who seek good for themselves, they don't give help to others. I'm sure you know this yourself. Someone who adorns themselves, someone who's focused on themselves, they don't do good things to others. But someone who who is just beggarly for themselves, they do well to others. So that happens exactly inside of Christ. But even in this world, as people live, there is that difference. But if you do forced at repentance, anyone, Anyone in Christ becomes a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. You change to become new. So if you do force your repentance and change, what that means is that your thoughts and your actions have changed. So you've become someone who is able to receive blessings. You've become a man. But, but we do force your repentance and become a blessed man. But then we go straight back to our old thoughts. You know, if you... If you went a long way and then when you turn back, you can realize that that you can realize that you're going the wrong way. But if it's just a paper thin um, distance, then you can't even tell the difference that you've turned back. So when you pray, you keep stubbornly You keep stubbornly praying for your desires so God doesn't give to you. He says, I will give to you something beyond that. You have to seek wisdom. If you seek wisdom, then whatever desire, that wisdom is better than that desire you seek. So it's by wisdom that you go to heaven. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. So why is it that God says we receive salvation by wisdom? Well, yes, faith is true too. But for this faith to go to heaven, you have to get to wisdom. So we've come to have all our desires fulfilled. But God says, what you seek, your desires. You know, a robber will seek a knife. That's that's all they're able to seek. So what is your desire? You know, you don't pray for others to do well. 
It's all about what you need. You know, please solve my money problems. It's the thoughts of a beast. So that's, they're your prayer topics. But God, He says, when you are evil, because you're only focused on yourself. But with wisdom, you go to heaven. With wisdom, you do more and more well. You have satisfaction. You give profit to others. This wisdom blocks all disasters because that is fearing. So God, what you're asking for is greed. It's being a thief. But if you seek wisdom, he'll give it all. So he wants you to change to become someone like that. But what you pray for, you know, you're like, oh, I prayed today and I still haven't received, you know, the, the, the enrollment fee. Oh, a month ago, you know, it's, I'm still praying for that. So how can that be the heart of Jesus Christ? If, because without the heart of Jesus Christ, you know, how could he have go up, how could he go up on the cross for your, yours and my sins? You know what is so regretful, no matter how much is preached to you, even though this is put inside of the sermon, you still don't know. But, you know, if you have, if you have these, these chop chair noodles, You say, oh, give me spring onion. You don't know that there's spring onion inside of those chapche noodles. If you, if you have the chapche noodles, it not only has spring onion, it has all things, but because you don't know this. So how evil are you? Even though you're given, you don't know. So if, if, if I say, oh, here, here's the spring onion, that's when you're like, oh, now I've received grace. Still, you're so childish. You know, if you truly do force that repentance and your vessel grows, you know that inside of those chapter noodles, it's got carrot and spring onions and meat and noodles, all of it. But like a little piano that's a toy, it only plays a few notes. That's a toy. The more octaves you have, that's when it's a superior product. But you can't do that. You're always still doing those, those little things. So God, he comes to give you blessings. But you only have this tiny little cup and you're saying, give me water so that it's only enough for you to drink. What about the person next to you who's, who's dying of thirst? And he's like, I can't give it to you until you change your thoughts, until you can love your neighbor as yourself, then he'll give to you. But you don't change those thoughts. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read it. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Amen. So wisdom, wisdom is better than all your desires being fulfilled. So what does that mean? So God says he will give all the desires to the righteous. But he says above your desires is wisdom. Why would he say this? So this wisdom is to go to heaven. This wisdom is to rule over the world. So who does he give wisdom to? To someone who is honest. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7. So God, when you pray so that your desires are fulfilled, when, when you have the thoughts of being evil, Don't ask for those desires. You, he wants you to be honest. But you say you do four step repentance. When you do four step repentance, it's because you have a problem. Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. So when you have problems, when you have troubles, you come to pray because of money, because of your family, your children, because of yourself. Whatever problem, you've come because of those problems. Oh, I don't have problems. Well, then you've come to keep your faith. You've come to keep those blessings. So whatever problem, you've come to the Lord. So as you, after you come here and you pray, after you do foster repentance, you enter inside of Christ. So God changes you to, to someone with the heart of Jesus Christ. So if you change, then you need to have a changed heart. So the heart of Jesus Christ is an honest, good heart. But... So because you've come wanting your disease healed, 
because you've come wanting blessings. Your thoughts are like this. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. So God does according to your thoughts. So after you pray, you should be coming here like the heart of Jesus Christ. So these problems, disease, or he's, it's for God to call you as an instrument of righteousness so that you can give profit to many people. You need to know this so that he can give you blessings. But so after being beaten, all you do is say, I'm in pain, heal me. Well, you're told to repent, to do forced repentance. So if you come this way, you'll be righteous. If you're righteous, then you have the heart of Jesus. That's faith. So you want to live, wanting to give profit to others. So you have to continue that way. But you're like, no, I've come to have my disease healed. Just, I just want that done. And so you go back to your greed. So after doing four-step repentance, you don't receive blessings and you go back. Wisdom goes to heaven. Wisdom, you do more and more well and you have satisfaction. You know, you say, I was born this way. You can do more well. Oh, you know, your father was a bean, so the child is a bean. No. Well, the child can become a watermelon. You can be whatever. So God, he wants you to do more well, but you go back to the thoughts of being a bean. So God says your desires, that desire of wanting your disease healed or, or wanting money or, or your mental problems or your children's problems, Those des desires, they're not what's important. Why, the reason why God gave you problems is not so that you'll get your desires, but for you to become a man, uh, an honest man. So God wants to appear through you and give profit to many people, to be someone who shares much to others. That's why he's called you to be a blessed man. He's called a beast that perishes. You know, he's not called you to fix the beast's leg or fix the beast's wing, but to, but to change you into a man. But you can't discern this. And so here it says, your desires, having them all, having them all fulfilled. You know, if you, if, if you have disease, you know, after you're full and, and then when you get a disease, that's when you're like, oh, you know, I want to go to heaven now. You know, when you're in a really urgent situation, you don't say, oh, I want to go to heaven. You want to be, you want your, if you're really hungry, you know, do you say, oh, I just want to go to heaven? No, you first pray for a bowl of food. And that's why Jesus, wherever he went, he fed people first. He healed diseases first because that's what people ask for. And then after that, that's when people start thinking about going to heaven. So it's after you eat that your eyes are open. So it's after eating God's word that your eyes are open. It's after you repent that your eyes are open. So God says, each of your desires, you know, even if all of them are fulfilled, they cannot compare to wisdom. Let's read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15 again. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Amen. So what is it that God's saying to you? He says, all of your desires being fulfilled, it's better that you have wisdom. Is this amen? So why does God say that? What is this wisdom? Wisdom is four-step repentance. It's Christ. So why did God do that? There is nothing as more precious than four-step repentance. Because if you have done four-step repentance properly, if you don't just do it once, but you continue to do it, when you do four-step repentance, you become righteous towards God. If you continue to do this, then God, he changes to you to become a completely new person. So if you do four-step repentance, where do you go? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, you go toward meeting God, but you don't do this. You do four-step repentance here, and then after service, you go back. Oh, before, when Pastor Park said, my disease is healed, it seemed healed, but when I came home, it's not. Well, it was healed. 
but you go back and you take that disease again. So you, that's why you're not healed. So a sermon without Christ is a sermon that will take you to hell. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. And yet, you go to where you hear those demons of curses without Christ. So Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 10. You know, I can't understand, it says. How is it that you stop doing four step repentance and you go to those places that are, that are cursed? Let's find Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. So please, let's realize and continue inside of Christ to do four step repentance. And let's fix our destiny. Let's have our desires fulfilled. So let's also receive wisdom, which is better than our desires. So why is it you can't live like that? And you, you know, forced at repentance is something separate. And what you do is, you know, and then the rest of your life is separate. But there are those demons who depart from forced at repentance. God says that is curses. So the person next to you, if they don't have joy on their face, they may think that they've done forced at repentance, but they've gone outside. They're, they're demons. They don't have joy. If you do forced at repentance, God gives you wisdom and knowledge. This knowledge makes my soul spirit joyful that's proverbs chapter 2 verse 10 but your face isn't joyful that's because you have demons so it's either demons or the holy spirits one or the other and then you say that you've done four step repentance how have you done four step repentance that you don't have joy the, that's that's a lie and so you've just pretended to but you haven't So you pretend, you come here, you pretend to, and then you just leave. So you're known like that. It's like, you know, if you get a, a, a dog's tail, if you just put it in the soot, you know, you need to actually burn it to make it black. But So, you know, if you put soot on a dog it seems black but when you when you brush it off it's actually white it seems changed but it hasn't so we go towards changing but as we change we come back out again you know we think that We're going to die there. So straight away we run out. You know, when you come here, your diseases are healed straight away. So someone who is one heart, they continue with that. And then later as they become double-minded, that, that those disasters and curses come back again. But if you do forced at repentance, you and I, God gives us one heart. If you become one heart, because God is one, You have to become one, one heart. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, there is one God. So why does he emphasize that there is one God? And then the, the one in between God and us is one too. James chapter 2, verse 19, even demons know that there is one God. But those who go to fake churches, Because they're not even as good as demons. They don't even know that. Why does God keep saying that it's one? Is it because we don't know? So God's saying, because I'm one, you have to become one. Your heart has to become one. And that's where he's talked about the where 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 there's a, connect, a connector. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. God's saying, I'm one. And he's saying, you're one. And The mediator is one. On the side of man is Christ, and on the side of God is, um, is Jesus. So even demons know that there is one God. James chapter 2, verse 19. So even if we're a demon, we know this. But why does God keep emphasizing that he's one? Because he's saying your heart has to be one in order to be connected to me. So just because you attend church, that's not how you have one heart. You have to do four-step repentance. Romans chapter 15, verse 5 to 6. That's when God makes your heart one. Is this our men? So people have come from Seoul and overseas. And when you come here, if you do according to the word and you receive answers, you know, then you, don't, you won't say those 
those petty things like, oh, heal my disease. When you're evil, when you're being hit for your sins, you know, those desires, the reason why God's hitting you is so that you and Him will hold hands. It's not for your disease to be healed. You know, it's not to ask for money. That's not why God's hitting you. He wants to appear through you and to save your family and career and the world. So that's why God's done that. We all have to receive this. So this is better than all your desires. So it's to receive these blessings, this amen. So already the, the heart that you have of reading the Bible, no matter how much I preach to you sermons, you, you forget and you do other things. So if your child, so the mother starves their child, why is it that the mother doesn't give food to her child? When the child is really hungry, is it so that the mother will, so that mother's trying to teach them, oh, you've got to learn, you know, what it is to be hungry? No, it's so that, it's not something so petty. It's so that the child will become a man. It's not, oh, I'm going to starve you so you know how precious one rice of grain is. That's just a training of one rice grain. You know, when God, he gives us problems, it's, it's because he's calling us. Psalms chapter 50, verse 15. So when God calls us, it's not to heal our sickness. It's not to give you money. That's not why God calls us. Whatever desire you have, it's for you to seek wisdom and obtain wisdom. Is this our man? So King Solomon, he was king. Why would he need wisdom? He's got everything on earth. He's got money and fame and honor. And So why is it that God says, above all your desires is wisdom? That's why a church with wisdom is a true church. Is this amen? So when you attend elementary school, because you're like a child, when you say something, you only know one thing. But when you go to university or postgraduate school and you research something, you know, when you say something, you go 360 degrees around. Because you know a lot, you can think about a lot of things. But an elementary school child only knows one thing because they're simple. So God calling us, God giving us problems to call us, is not so that your disease will be healed. It's so that you'll come to Him and to receive wisdom and take all things. So, Who does he give wisdom to? To someone who is honest. This honesty, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 2, is someone who fears God. What is fearing? It's to go to heaven. Let's find Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23. So you go to heaven, you do more well, and doesn't just end there. You All your disasters are blocked. So there are so many different types of disasters that are blocked. So that's why he's called you to, to receive this. That's why he says wisdom is the best. So receiving wisdom is to fear. You have to fear to receive wisdom. That's Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. You have to fear God to receive wisdom. No matter how much I tell you, you don't understand. And you just say, oh, please heal my disease. And you go back to your past. When God gives you disease or if your husband's become re redundant, it's through that that God calls you so that you become his son that can do everything. It's not just about you becoming redundant and finding a job. That's not why he called you. So does that mean he won't give you a job? No, what won't he give you? He'll give you all things. So God, he's called you so he can give you all blessings, you know. But you're sitting at home crying, saying, oh, I want ox, oxtail soup. Oh, it's so tasty. I want that. I want that. So then God, he doesn't just cut off the tail of a cow. He brings the whole cow and, and he's like, take it. So you say, thank you. And then you just chop off the tail and take that. Why do you want to become an idiot? That's why God says, I'm not going to give to you. He's saying you have to take it all. Take it all, take it all, receive it all. Let's receive it all. Thank you. This is such a good promise. 
So from now, let's change our thoughts. Oh, he hasn't called me just to have my disease healed or just to give money. It's to take everything. That is wisdom. Is this amen? So because you haven't heard sermons like this, you're like, oh, is there something like that? You know, this is not what I'm saying. It's what the Bible says. So why can't you receive it? It's because of this. And that's why Pastor Park, even though you bring your problems, you know, you wish fervently that I'll pray for your disease to be healed. But it's like saying, oh, if you could just, chop off the tail because I want oxtail soup. No, it's better that you receive the whole cow. How can you not know? So the righteous, what is fulfilled? Their desires. So is your desire just one oxtail soup? And after that, straight away, after you eat that oxtail soup, you'll be like, well, I feel like ox feet soup. So you have to take the whole cow. But if you're given the whole cow, you're like, oh, but I asked for oxtail soup. So then you leave the cow and you just leave. So and then you say you're living a life of faith. Let's live properly. So let's read Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23. The fear of Jehovah leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Amen. So fearing, fearing is honesty. Honesty is fearing. So if you fear, then you'll be given wisdom. Why is it that I ask for answers and I'm given wisdom? Well, you keep saying, I want oxtail soup. But God gives you wisdom so that you receive the whole cow. So you have to be given everything. You know, if you have the whole cow, that's when you can share. That's when you can help your neighbor. That's when you give glory to God. So what is giving glory? It's to go to heaven. Going to heaven and giving profit to others and giving joy so that that person will also go to heaven. So through you, God wants to appear. But you just keep asking for just that tail. And so you come to the place of righteousness and then turn back. Please, if you see something beside you, So, I was just going to finish the breakfast prayer and come back to Busan and rest. But then they said suddenly, oh, let's have a revival tonight. And I said, Lord, what is, what is this? And I said, if it's for your glory, I'll do it, even if I, even if it's to the point of death. And so I said, amen, and did it. That's why I did it. You know, it's not because I planned it. I said, oh, I'm going to do this and this, and then I'm going to go rest. No matter how much I've planned or thought, if it's to give God glory and give profit to others, then I have to do it. But you don't do that. Well, this is my schedule today. So whether someone dies or not, I I don't know. I'm just going to do this. Now let's realize properly. What desire have I brought? Because of that desire, You know, you go towards four step repentance blessings and then you go back to evil. We have to cut off our desires because above those desires is to seek wisdom. Let's seek wisdom and receive answers. Let's receive everything. Let's receive everything. So today we have to receive. So after doing four step repentance, oh, please heal my disease. Don't go back to there. There is no almighty God who can't heal diseases. Oh, I just want the cow's tenderloin or the cow's rib or... Stop saying those petty thoughts. Leave off those petty desires. If you have wisdom, you get the whole cow. So let's receive everything. Let's receive it all. That's why you've come to Busan First Church in order to receive it all. If you come to Busan First Church, why is it that the sermon has so many things? Because you have to receive it all. Let's close our eyes quietly. 
by forced at repentance? Don't just say, just heal my child. God, who's called me to him by my child's problems, thank you. If we meet God, then our family problems, our money, our reputation, all problems will be healed, will be solved. Let's become someone who receives these answers. Tonight, we have to receive. Tonight, even if God calls us, we have to depart without shame. So let's pray so that our thoughts change. God will work. God is living and working. But always like a frog in a well. Oh, I just want my desire of my children to do well. That's... You know, those thoughts that are smaller than a needle's eye. Oh, if only our house, our money problems, you know, will be solved, then I don't want anything else. That's the thoughts of of someone who is evil. If you can't cut off those thoughts, then you have to know that your neighbor is your own body. That person who's become redundant is me. So we need to be able to pray. All this, all these wrong thoughts that I've had. My, it's not my money and my health and my family's problems. It's because God wants to give us all things. So we, God, we have to receive that. It's when we pray. That's when God says, "You're good. Your thoughts are right." That's when He gives you blessings. Let's call upon the Lord three times and pray, Lord, Lord, Lord. 